Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll discuss colligative properties of strong electrolyte solutions. So what is a strong electrolyte? Remember, it's anything that dissociates in solution. And generally, we will assume that we have complete dissociation. Another word for that is ionization because we are discussing ionic compounds that can be soluble in water. And it depends on, remember colligative properties, always depend on the number of particles and that's of dissolved particles. And this is called the Van Hoff factor, and it's represented by little i. And that is the moles of particles in the solution that are like dissolved over the mole of formula units, because usually it's one. dissolved. So for example, let's say we had sucrose, which has the molecular formula C12, H22O11, and that's a solid. And when we add it to water, it doesn't break apart into multiple pieces. It stays as one. And so therefore, the number of particles that are dissolved is 1 over how much we put in was 1. And so in this case here, I is equal to 1. However, if we had something like magnesium chloride, magnesium chloride is soluble in water, so it will dissolve into ions. So by the way, if you have an insoluble ionic solid, it doesn't break up into more particles, then I is still one. So just because it's ionic doesn't mean that it will have an I greater than one. But magnesium chloride soluble, so it will dissolve into magnesium, two plus ions, um, and two chloride ions. And so what are the number of particles on the right side of the equation? We have one, two, three. Three particles over one mole of formula unit that we put in. So in this case here, I is equal to three. And therefore, with these kind of ionic compounds, we know that I is directly related to or directly proportional to freezing point depression. Um, or boiling point elevation. So if we add magnesium chloride in the same amount to a solvent, such as water, um, and the same as sucrose, we would notice a larger freezing point depression because I is much greater for magnesium chloride than it is for sucrose. In addition, I is not always equal to this whole number here. Um, for magnesium chloride, it could be I is equal to 2.8. Um, so sometimes, and most of the time, it's usually less. Um, if it doesn't say in the problem that you're working, just assume that it's complete dissociation. Um, however, you could also be asked to solve for I from a formula. So for example, if you had osmotic pressure, we know that's I times molarity times R times T. And let's say you measure the osmotic pressure you know the concentration of molarity, and R is the ideal gas constant, and T is temperature, that you could, and you don't know for sure what I is, then you could rearrange this equation to solve for I. And my apologies, let me erase this. So just so you know that the Van Hoff factor isn't always a whole number, um, but for most uh, problems that we work in a general chemistry course, we assume that it is, that we have complete dissociation for ionic compounds and that it's one for covalent compounds or insoluble ionic compounds. All right, let's work an example together. 
This question is asking us what mass of sodium chloride, salt, and grams should you add to one liter of water in an ice cream maker to make a solution that freezes at negative 10 degrees Celsius? Um, assume complete dissociation, so here it tells you that assumption of the sodium chloride and a density of one gram per milliliter for water. My daughter would love this question. Ice cream is her favorite dessert as well as mine, so I'm excited to work this one with you. All right, so given, remember as scientists, we always like to organize our data, what we're provided. We have a volume of 1.00 liters of water. Water is going to be your what? Excellent, it's gonna be your solvent. So remember when you're working with solutions, as I've said in previous videos, to identify your solute and your solvent. Um, just always imagine what's in my beaker, what's going on. So we have one liter of water, and that's our solvent, and the solution freezes at negative 10 degrees Celsius. So that's telling me the freezing point of the solution is equal to negative 10 degrees Celsius. And assume that we have complete dissociation of sodium chloride, and we know sodium chloride's NaCl, and complete dissociation means I is equal to what? Excellent, I is equal to two because sodium chloride, when it dissociates in water, it dissociates into the sodium cation and the chloride anion. Okay. And we can also assume that the density for water is equal to one gram per milliliter, and that's gonna be useful for us in a little bit. Now we learned in a previous video, and check it out if you haven't done so already, about freezing point depression. And we learned that the freezing point of the solution, which in this case is provided, is equal to the freezing point of the solvent. And remember, we identify that as water, which is zero degrees Celsius, is minus the freezing point of the depression. So this we can solve for, we can kind of measure it, we can measure it in the laboratory. Um, this is the freezing point of the solvent. And remember, because it's depression, we have to subtract out this freezing point depression. So from that, we just learn that this is negative 10 degrees Celsius for the solution. Waters are solvent, so the freezing point is zero degrees Celsius minus the freezing point depression. And so therefore, the freezing point depression is 10 degrees Celsius. All right, so freezing point depression Remember from that previous video is equal to I times the freezing point depression constant times molality. And so we know what I is for the solutes too. Kf, is it for the solute or solvent? Excellent, for the solvents for water. In this case, it's 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. And we're trying to find, and that's important that I write that down, we're trying to find the mass of sodium chloride in grams. Like that's what we're trying to find. And remember to go from grams, we need moles. Before we get, well, before we get into grams, we need to figure out the moles. We're gonna figure out the moles from the molality. Because remember molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So molality just as a refresher is the moles of the solute over kilograms of the solvent. All right, so then that means, that gives me a clue that I need to rearrange this freezing point depression constant equation in order to solve for molality. So molality is going to be the freezing point depression over I, the Van T Hoff factor, times Kf. So that's 10 degrees Celsius over two times 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. And I got that to be equal to 2.688172 molal of sodium chloride. But I need to figure out, remember that molality in this case here is equal to moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. We actually know the kilograms of solvent. We need to figure that out um, in order to solve for the moles of the solute, right? Which we will, that will go there, okay? 
So how do we find the kilograms of solvent? Well, we were told that we had one liter of water, which is our solvent. And we know that there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. And the density of water in this case is one gram per milliliter. Remember that's temperature dependent. Um, so it can change the density. And that for every one kilogram, there are a thousand grams. And so using dimensional analysis, we can make sure we set it up properly because the units cancel out and we're left in kilograms. And the answer you have here is that for every one liter of water, if the density is one gram per milliliter, you have one kilogram of water. So that worked out nicely. All right, so I want to find the moles of the solute. So I'm going to plug that into the molality formula. And so I'm going to say we have 2.688172 molal is equal to the moles of the solute, in this case sodium chloride, over one kilogram of solvent, which is water. So the moles of sodium chloride is actually 2.688172 moles. And I wanna find grams, that's like the end goal here. So I need to multiply by the molar mass of sodium chloride, which is 58.44 grams per mole. And I get 157 grams, round it to three sig figs, of sodium chloride. And there you go. So just to summarize, we used the freezing point depression formula in order to determine the moles of sodium chloride we needed to add to get the freezing point of the solution to negative 10 degrees Celsius. Because remember, the whole point here was to make ice cream, right? We need to get cold. We need to get cold fast. Um, and so the way to do that is to add salt, right? And so it decreases the freezing point to, to, to negative 10 degrees Celsius for that solution. But from this formula, we found the molality, and the molality allowed us, as long as we know how much solvent we have, we can figure out the moles of the solute we need to add to get that freezing point depression. And it turns out that it was 157 grams of sodium chloride needed to bring down one liter of water to negative 10 degrees Celsius. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.